video I wanted to talk about catalysis and this is chapter 10 of Elements of Chemical Reaction Engineering by Fogler and I have the fourth edition. And if you have Essentials of Chemical Reaction Engineering, I'm not sure if that's still chapter 10, but it's just a chapter on catalysis so you can look that up. And so I will, I've been trying to decide the what the best way is to um, to talk about this in the videos and because I wanted to do some short videos on the various topics and so I'm thinking that in this one I'll do this will just be a broad overview of catalysis so basically the steps in a catalytic reaction because I think if you understand the steps or kind of what's going on it's a lot easier to set up and solve your problem and then in the next video I'm thinking about doing uh, so it'll be to determine the rate law for catalytic reactions so depending on which step is limiting because one of your steps is you know, going to be limiting in a catalytic reaction then you determine your rate law from that and so I'll go over that in that video and then I'm thinking about doing a video on deactivation but I'm not sure if I will so if you want that video definitely message me and let me know to make one on the deactivation of catalysts but if not I might not make that because I'm not sure if that was covered in class so anyway for this video basically a catalyst is a substance that affects the rate of the reaction but it emerges unchanged so the reaction doesn't change the catalyst and it can either accelerate or slow down the reaction and it changes only the rate of reaction not the equilibrium but basically uh, the catalytic reaction occurs at the surface of the catalyst between so at the at the solid liquid interface and so a large area is almost always essential in obtaining a large reaction rate when you have a catalyst and so also catalysts don't last forever and so this is what I'm talking about where I'm thinking about doing a video on deactivation but I'm not sure if I will but it's good to know that deactivation can happen from a few different ways first of all aging second poisoning so basically an irreversible deposition of a substance onto the active site of the catalyst and then fouling or coking which is the deposit of carbon or other material onto the surface and so the steps in a catalytic reaction so I'll just write this down so steps in catalytic reaction. So first of all let's say that this is your catalytic surface and you have a so let's say that this is the so this is the boundary between say the outside say if say if you have a particle and the your reactant has to get so the, you have a porous particle and your reactant has to get into the pores and go through the catalyst in order to get to the catalytic site or the surface and so this is where internal diffusion would occur and in order to get to that spot there's it, the your reactant also needs to travel through the through the bulk fluids so this would be external diffusion here so anyway you have let's say you have a reaction that's A to B and it has to take place on the catalyst so it's not this isn't just going to happen without the catalyst so you have A right here and the first thing it needs to do is diffuse through the bulk mixture to wherever the to get to the 
surface or the outside of this of your of your porous particle or your catalyst and so it's here like it's at the catalyst but it's not quite at the site where it can where it absorbs onto the surface so this would be step number one and this is the mass transfer so diffusion of reactants to move to the surface from the bulk fluids so of reactants to move to the surface from the bulk fluid. So then the next thing it needs to do is that it diffuses through the catalyst pores to the immediate to the to the internal catalytic surface. So that's right here. So it's, and actually I, I'm not going to draw this right on the surface yet because it hasn't absorbed. So now it's at the surface of the, of the internal site or vicinity of the internal catalytic surface right before it absorbs to the surface. So this would be step two. So two is internal diffusion to vicinity of catalytic surface. So then the next step is the absorption onto the surface. So now it's absorbed to the surface. So I'm going to put three absorption to surface. And then the reaction on the surface happens. So this is four. And so this is A to B. So four reaction on surface. And then the next thing that occurs is it needs to desorb from the surface. So it's going to, so B, so this is B now, it's going to desorb from the surface. So it's still in the vicinity of this site, but it's desorbed. So this is step five. Five desorption from surface. And then in step six, there it has to diffuse out of the pore. So it's still inside of this catalyst, like in the it's so I mean the catalyst is a porous medium and it's still inside somewhere, and so it has to diffuse out. And so now it's at the, so this would be step six. And so now it's at this sort, it's at this, at the external site of the catalyst, but it's still near the catalyst, but it has now diffused out to the outside edge. So six is diffusion. from interior of catalyst to external surface. And so then it has to, it has to, well there, so it has to diffuse from the surface to the bulk fluid. So this. So this is B. And that's step seven. So this would be mass transfer of product 
from surface to bulk fluid. So looking at all these steps, any one of these steps could potentially slow down the reaction because all of these things have to happen in this order for the reaction to occur. So say if it diffuses really slowly through the fluid or this internal diffusion is really slow, but this the, the, the actual absorption, desorption, and reaction is really fast, the, re the reaction will be, the reaction rate will be the rate of the slowest step. And so in, in the next video where I want to talk about how you determine what the actual rate law is, even though any of these diffusion steps could slow it down, we're looking at the, we're looking at this portion right here. So the absorption, the, the reaction, and the desorption. And so anyway, I just feel like this to kind of understanding what's going on here is helpful for like the overall picture and, and figuring out what's happening with your reaction and writing your rate laws. So anyway, the, the next video I'm going to talk about how to determine the rate law from the, your, so your rate law from, for this based on whichever step is the slowest one.